<laughs> it's an exciting uh, time of year for us uh, wrestlers and fans here because uh, it's when we all gather around our televisions and uh, we watch this show for this company that I used to be in, but I'm not in anymore. And uh, I probably make somewhere around the same amount of money, but I'm not really free to discuss that. Anyway, it's, it's, uh, it's time for that big show. Let's preview it, folks. Playtime's over because tonight somebody's going to get their ass whooped tonight in here. Welcome to Bowling Shoe Handsome for Monday, March 26, 2012. I'm your host, Kevin McElvaney, and we are here, folks, for the Go Home Show, that being the last edition of Bowling Shoe Handsome that will air prior to WrestleMania 28. So I'm excited, you're excited. Everybody's excited who is a wrestling fan. You should be even more excited because here tonight on Bowling Shoe Handsome, we have the podcastic return of one Mike Bessler, who will be here keeping it real with us on Bowling Shoe Handsome. But before we do that, before we talk to him, before we talk about anything else regarding WrestleMania or anything else we feel like talking about, because face it, folks, that's what we do here. We just uh, ramble by we. It's the royal we, meaning I have to get used to a... Referring, <laughs> referring to myself in the f- the first person again. Uh, that's enough rambling. Let's head to, to some music. Got a few great songs here, beginning with the please and thank yous with peas and cheese.
going too handsome. She's a cute girl on a bike And she rides right down my street With a skirt up way too high New sneakers on her feet And if she knew just how I felt She'd probably stop and say hello But when she finds out what I'm like She will carry on, she'll go And she'll never ever ride down my street again That was the Sass Dragons with 8 or 9 on a Bike. Love that song. Prior to that, we had Suburban Decay by Ascetic Parade. Of course, the band that does our weekly Bowling Shoe Handsome theme song. And before that, the please and thank yous with the song Peas and Cheese. CM Punk's career has been an interesting thing to follow for me. As I remember watching him in Ring of Honor, uh, not in the same capacity that a lot of other people were able to see him. I'm talking about back in 2002-2003 when Ring of Honor aired only on television, local uh, local television here in Philadelphia, uh, the same channel that years before had aired ECW, the original incarnation, not the not the Tuesday night sci-fi uh, extravaganza, <laughs> but channel channel 48 here in Philadelphia aired around that around 2002-2003 was airing CZW and Ring of Honor and a few others. And watching CM Punk come up then, this guy who, relative to a lot of other jacked up pro wrestlers, especially at that time, you still had the huge bodybuilder type dominating the main event scene in WWE and elsewhere. But then you had Ring of Honor, you had this small guy, CM Punk, you know, who, who was wearing uh, clothing adorned with the logos of bands I listened to, covered in tattoos of bands I listened to, talking about straight edge and and the straight edge lifestyle you know as an 18 year old diehard ian mckay minor threat fan that was something that definitely spoke to me a lot and just watching him go from that through the ranks of ring of honor brief appearances in tna and then finally yes that tuesday night extravaganza the ecw brand on on sci-fi watching cm punk move through his career and up the ladder in WWE all the way to the top where he is essentially the biggest star in the company right now. It's interesting that all these years later, he's uh, he's still able to focus on this, the straight edge lifestyle, lifestyle uh, and some very personal aspects about himself that make him that much more likable. Interesting to me also is that this feud with Chris Jericho has gotten so intensely personal and we, I, excuse me, touched on this last week. And since then, you had CM Punk and Chris Jericho exchanging words and Jericho bringing Punk's sister into the picture, uh, accusing her of being a drug addict and of possibly doing some things to get her drugs that uh, Punk and his family may not have been proud of. Again, this has gotten intensely personal. How much of it is true? Well, the least shades of it are true, uh, if, if we're to go by what Punk was saying on air. And it sort of brings up the question is the question of how personal is too personal. Well, we've, we've got a series of really personal matches this year. We have the Rock Cena, which is very personal about, but then we have Chris Jericho bringing up 
CM Punk's family and perhaps less than flattering things about them. Is that really going to make this match any more intense at WrestleMania? Well, you know, I don't know. It is going to be a great match, I have no doubt. It'll be a, a physical match. It'll be, technically speaking, a lot of fun to watch and entertaining. But again, it's, uh, it's, it's getting really personal. And I'm curious to see what they do on Raw tonight. But regardless, I think we're going to have a hell of a match on Sunday. That's got to be the one I'm looking the mo- looking forward to the most, despite uh, some limitations in the amount of time that those two men have had to build the match. And maybe that's why we're seeing some of these more desperate shots being taken. I'm also interested to hear what one Mike Bessler is going to be saying when he comes on the show. We're going to get his thoughts on WrestleMania and what matches he might be most and perhaps least excited about. So he will be on in just a few minutes, and we'll be getting his opinions on on several things. Very excited about that. Mike Bessler, of course, has not been on uh, TheBradyHicks.com or on his show Matt Minutia, not really doing much of anything on the Internet as of late because he's been busy with other more important things. But that said, very much looking forward to hearing what he has to say, uh, as, as well as discussing a few other things many of them WrestleMania related tonight. We have some great songs coming up here over the course of the program. Uh, we have some music coming up from some bands playing Road to Ruin Fest, which we discussed last week. And again, that's coming up in Philadelphia next month. So we'll have some more information about that later on in the program. But before that, a couple more songs. And we're going to play one by Third Year Freshman first. And this song is called Hope It's Not Me on Bowling Shoe Handsome.
like the sound of a great thunder. The sound which I heard was like that of harpers playing on their harps. They sing a new song before the throne and before the four living creatures and the elders. No one could learn the song except the one. All right, and that was music from Mike Bessler. And appropriately enough, we have Mike Bessler on the show with us once again. Mike, welcome back to Bowling Shoe Handsome. Thanks for having me back. It's all gravy from this point forward. Absolutely. And so a little bit strange for me here because I've been doing the the show by myself here for the past, well, 1.5 shows. And, of course, John's gone now the last time you were here. Uh, John was here. And I don't know, it's it's good to hear another human voice, I guess, while I'm recording this. And again, we've been wanting to have you back on the show anyway, so again, thanks for, for doing this. And I wanted to get your opinion specifically, with this being the go-home week for WrestleMania, about the show. What matches you're most excited for specifically? So, what do you think? Well, you know, I, I don't have the card in, right in front of me, and you might be able to help me out with this, but I, I can tell you what I'm definitely not looking forward to and, and the, the Team Teddy versus Team Johnny match, I think uh, if it follows tradition, it, it will not be much of a showstopper. Um, I think a lot of people are just looking at that as filler. And uh, I don't know, just despite the conditions or, or the, the terms of that match, if anything will be resolved definitively. Um, and I think there's... Um, is there a Kane Orton match there booked for Kane, WrestleMania? Yeah, there is a Kane Orton match. Is anybody looking forward to that? I, <laughs> I think it was a good way to get them both on the show, honestly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, that's the sort of thing they try to do here. They try to include as many people as they deem are important on the card, and that's kind of what the t- Team Teddy and Team Johnny match is. And I kind of like it for that uh, for that aspect. I'm a little bit concerned if it's a one fall to a finish match about the match quality, but yeah. I think it's good at any rate that you have the guys on the show. I guess you're a little bit less interested because you don't think the match quality is going to be there? Well, yeah, yeah. I, elimination tag matches, I, I'm always a big fan of those. I don't right. know that that's what this is going to be. Yeah, the, and, yeah specified. It, yeah. And, and, and there was a big mixed tag match last year, if, I'm, if I remember right. It was the John Morrison where he disrespected Chris Strat, uh, Trish Stratus. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, my gosh, that that it didn't. It wasn't a very long match. It was just kind of thrown together. Uh, you know, the 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 Kane Orton match in a way reminds me of the uh, match a few years back where I think WWE realized that they didn't have a spot for Batista on the card, so they created a, like a bragging rights match with him and uh, Umaga. Uh, so I mean, that's you know, those two matches, you know, respectively, remind me of those other two things and many things like them. Over history, um, I, I'm, I'm a little bothered by the fact that I'm not really looking forward to the CM Punk Jericho matchup. Uh, really, I I don't know why that is either. I mean, because CM Punk is is uh, uh, you know definitely one of my one of my favorites. I think one of my top five, top three that's wrestling right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I'm not sure how that's kind of uh, petered out for me. It might be that just the hype around. Uh, the Hell in a Cell match and the um, Cena Rock match have eclipsed, you know, that the the, the Punk Jericho build up at this point. Uh, and it's not so much that I that I have a lot of concern of what the outcome is going to be for those two big main events. I'm just curious to see what they're going to do with them or how they're going to get out of the uh, Hell in a Cell match and keep Undertaker's streak intact. And uh, what they're going to do with the uh, Cena Rock thing, is it going to be punctuated or is it going to go on into uh, 2012 like a lot of people are expecting? Hmm. Yeah, I, I can't really see the Rock hanging around long enough for it to continue out much. But I think, that, just going back for a second, because I think that, that could take hours just to get through that discussion, yeah. to, to Punk Jericho, because... You look at that, obviously it's technically going to be a great match. The, both mm-hmm. of them are going to put on a great show. I don't think anybody's doubting that. But you're right. Yeah, the build has been a little bit underwhelming rel- relative to the Cena Rock match and the Hell in a Cell match with Triple H and Undertaker. So there is that. I initially was not looking forward to that feud, that being the, um, the Punk-Jericho feud, for reasons that I didn't really think Punk needed this match with Jericho to make him any any better or more important than in the eyes of the fans. I thought he was doing a great job. And Jericho, you know, if he was going to make a return, he probably could have been working with somebody else. 
and helping them out a little bit more. But with that said, I mean, I think they've been doing a pretty good job with the hand they've been dealt. It's just that, again, they're opening the show most of the weeks, and you have Undertaker and Triple H or a Roxena segment closing the show and, and getting a lot more airtime. And that doesn't really help the perception of the WWE title. So there's that. And, yeah. That's yeah, the... My... the... It... No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, that's that's probably my biggest problem. And, and there's actually rumors that Punk Jericho is going to open the show, which bothers me even more. Yeah. It, it didn't... That didn't work out well for, for Edge, I think, was it last yeah. year when he opened the show. Um, you know, I, I think for me, just personally, and where I'm coming from as a fan... Or, or maybe where I'm at right now is Jericho's comeback was so anticlimactic for me that it, you know it, it, the time that it took for him to kind of work into the feud with CM Punk, I kind of lost interest in Jericho, and that might be you know it, it, it's unfortunate for CM Punk with all the momentum that he had that he had this you know start stop feud with Nash and then this start stop feud with Jericho, and it's like um, you know it's it's maybe it's it's not his fault i don't think uh but i, I you know i like you said it, it i think it'll be a good technical matchup but um i don't know i i'm really I, i'm really curious particularly about the undertaker triple h match and how Shawn michaels is going to factor into it the idea that it's a hell in a cell at wrestlemania right. and that there is something with the streak and i think Anything short of Undertaker winning is going to be a disappointment for me. And I'm not even that crazy about Undertaker or the streak, but my concern is that they're going to end this one with an asterisk, uh, that it's going to be 19 and something else, and that maybe in a couple of weeks they'll overrule this and that and it'll officially go down to 20. But I think it'll uh, uh, anything beyond just 20 and 0 is gonna is is not gonna work for me. I, yeah. Does that mean I'm uh, that I'm difficult as a fan or too particular? <laughs> no, I think that would be incredibly stupid for them to ruin to tarnish something like the streak. And again, whether or not you're a fan of it, it definitely is working for a lot of people. So I would definitely not want to see an asterisk. Um, yeah. It's if there is going to be a loss, it needs to be a very decisive loss. I don't think that's the way to go. I'd rather see the streak continue, and it's not really going to help Triple H out at all as as a wrestler. He doesn't need it. That went over Undertaker at WrestleMania. You know his character does, but <laughs> yeah. But career wise, he definitely career wise does he doesn't. You know. Right. That's that's the important distinct distinction to make there. Um, does he know that though? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Again, he likes to uh, interject himself into things and where he, that whole Punk thing, the Punk-Nash yeah. feud, and then Punk and Triple H with their feud not being resolved. Again, he, he tends to put himself in situations to keep himself viable sometimes. And, and, you know, there's a reason for him to stay viable because obviously the fans react to him, but mm. at some point you kind of just let it go. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and I mean, I, I, I don't know if you've discussed this anywhere else, but I mean, is there a, is there a concern maybe that um, they're headed towards a Triple H Shawn Michaels feud again after WrestleMania? Has anybody thought of that? Or does that seem imminent uh, in, in your mind, given the way things are going? I don't. I mean, I could see it happening. I hope it doesn't. I, uh, I would really like to see Shawn Michaels honor his retirement stipulation. Yeah, you know, and he's he's at home with his family. He's happy. He doesn't really need to be out on the road every week. He could make his occasional appearances, still get to do what he loves here and there without actually stepping into the ring or in a, in a competitor's uh, capacity. But I, I guess the answer to that is I hope not, but I'm not sure. And, and Cena Rock is going to be the main event, yeah, right? Absolutely. I mean, it's got to be yeah. the main event. So my one thing i've been wondering that i've not bothered to research is is this the first time that a wrestlemania main event has not involved the title i, I think probably not but it's no, been I, a long time i believe that bam bam bigelow and uh, lawrence and, taylor and lawrence was the last taylor match. yeah that's yeah. that's i w- i was thinking that and then boy that's a that you know that's kind of a weird match too uh this certainly it, it certainly makes sense to do this as the main event. I don't think there's anything else on the card that really uh, that really means anything as far as the main event goes. I guess uh, Daniel uh, Daniel Bryan is he's wrestling Big Show, right? Daniel Bryan's wrestling uh, Sheamus. He's defending. Oh, Sheamus, Sheamus, that's right. And Cody Rhodes. Yeah, boy, that's, see, that's how little I know about <laughs> about that one. Yeah, there's the Cody Rhodes. Yeah, yeah. That's so Co- right. 
Co- and Cody Rhodes is defending against uh, against Big Show. He's defending the yeah. Intercontinental title. Yeah. So you have. I, I have given either of them a second thought. You know, I, uh, I I don't know how many people are really chomping at the bit to see either of those matches. Although the the Brian and Sheamus match might be good, it's it's really not a you know not a top tier match by any stretch of the imagination. No, no, these are definitely not matches that uh, that the show is being built around. I do think they're going to be good matches. I think, you know, with the guys that are involved, I, I think they'll be entertaining. And I mean, I definitely am interested in them, but mm-hmm. again, they're not they're not the cornerstones of this show by any means. I think and, you know, I have to think that if there was a Money in the Bank match, that I'd be saying, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that one. Uh, and again, I don't mean to be difficult or, or <laughs> snickety or snarky or anything like that and just pick the one thing that's not being offered on the card, but I really miss that, and I know I'm not the only person that does. Yeah, I do too. And honestly, I, I just don't think it's as special as it used to be with the actual pay-per-view event, the Money in the Bank pay-per-view event now. I think having it be that yearly match at WrestleMania where there was only one briefcase really meant something. And I think it was something to look forward to at the show. And the rumors yeah. were that they were going to bring it back this year, but they obviously haven't. You know, the the guys in the Money in the Bank match had their time to shine more than folks in a big, huge, you know, 10, 12-man tag match. Right. Uh, and that's what made that, you know, when you talk about kind of putting something on the card to give everybody a chance to show their big, you know, to, to show what they're made of. Right. I don't think a tag match is going to do that. Certainly not going to do it like a Money in the Bank match. So not on the uh, same scale, no. It's yeah, yeah. I, but, but you know, the back back to the main events. I I I, I am really interested in Rock Cena match, and and I think you and I have talked uh, personally or over Facebook or whatever about the fact that I'm not a really big Cena fan, but he seems to show up time and again in my list of favorite matches. Yeah, he's really pulled it out the last couple weeks and really kind of. Uh, ramp things up as far as his promo work and everything yep. so I am kind of you know pulling for him to, to put on another really good match I, and I, I'd like to see if the rock can match him blow for blow at, at this point I don't know if he can yeah I'm not sure that he's done it the past few weeks anyway I, I would look for mm-hmm. something big from him uh, this week on Raw but it just to me the what's been great about Cena lately is that he's finally shown some edge and some attitude and mm-hmm. he had not, and I'm not talking about John Cena rapping and things like that. Sure, I'm talking sure. About he actually has a little bit of anger to him, and that he should. And I guess that was the whole point of the the feud with Kane and all this stuff going wrong in his life that it provided reason for him to start acting a little bit differently. He wasn't just like this big ham playing up to the crowd all the time with the corny jokes. You know, I think people are getting a little bit. I mean, certainly part of the audience is not, but a lot of people are getting a little bit tired of that. And yeah. I think for him to be in this, some of these big feuds and for people to actually want to see them, he has to look like he gives a crap about the match. <laughs> and yeah. in, this, in this case, he definitely does. And this is a really personal match, and it's not even – I was actually questioning the, the logic behind not having the title on the line in this match, but not having the title on the line has actually let them focus a little bit more on the personal aspect of this feud, which is pretty cool. And that's yeah. – I like that. You know, it's funny you bring up the rapping thing too, because <laughs> when they when they did that, I was kind of like, okay, you know, I was I was off doing other things when he was the doctor of thugonomics and all that. Um, but so I was kind of interested, and he came out and did that thing at the beginning of the show or whatever, and I'm like, okay, that was that was funny. Now, you know, I can't wait till he raps later on, and then it it started to sink in. I'm like, oh, that was it. That was the rap. I mean, unless I did, I turn it off too early. I mean, I think I watched that whole show. I expected him to actually come out and rap, and and that was more kind of like, uh, like, um, like the Deaf Poetry Slam or something like that, you know? Right, and not, and not up to those standards either, really. Well, you know, the bar's still already pretty low. I'm not but, a big Poetry Slam fan, so that's you know, it's it's more exciting in person. But anyway, that's another topic for another show. Um, no, for real, it can be a lot of. I'm, I'm just remembering college now. Um, but, yeah, bring, bring me back next week and we'll talk poetry. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll, we'll actually play and instead of music. It'll be, you know. And this next one up, this is E.E. E. Cummings reciting. I sing of Olaf. <laughs> I think you and I should recite works by famous <laughs> famous poets, you know. Uh, yeah, we'll hear a lot of uh, graveyard turning after that. Bowling, Yeah, bowling shoe handsome poetry slam. It could happen. <laughs> 
Well, at least both of us will download it. Yeah, that's that's true. <laughs> That's, yeah, we'll, we'll be like 200% over Brady's usual downloads for everything else on the site. So. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I had to get that in. Well, look, I, I know you're busy. You have a lot going on. But, uh, but I had to ask you one more thing because you, you've overlooked what is possibly, if not not just the most hyped match for WrestleMania this year, but possibly of all time. And that, of course, being the match pitting Kelly Kelly and extras Maria Menounos against Beth Phoenix. And Eve. So, what are your thoughts on the Divas? How in the hell did that even happen? I I looked on the card the other night, uh, and and I saw that, and I'm like, nah, and I didn't think about it for much longer. Um, there are a lot of other women there too, and usually the way that they involve the the, the Divas in in uh, WrestleMania is not you know worthwhile or flattering or anything like that anyway. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I don't think too much about it. I, there, there's so much other good stuff as far as TNA and independent stuff uh, as far as women's wrestling that, right. you know, it, it's not – when I hear, you know, divas and women on WWE, I just – I don't get too excited one way or the other. I really thought we were going to see – and this is what bums me out. I really thought we were going to see Karma, a.k.a. Austin uh, Karma, yeah. and Beth yeah. at WrestleMania. I really – I mean, it's possible that she could appear – before, during, after that match. But I really thought we were going to see that. But Maria Menounos, I guess, has been a big WWE fan for years, and she wrestled once before. And then they they put together this horrible little run-in on Extra, and it was the most incredibly awkward thing. And she somehow knew at the end of Beth Phoenix coming out and calling her out that she'd been booked for WrestleMania. It just looked horribly, horribly fake. And I, I know, <laughs> of course, it was going to look that way, but it was particularly bad. <laughs> Well, I mean, you got to support the Greeks in my household. But uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I I have to be painfully honest with you. I don't know who this person is. Um, I, and I'm looking at her Wikipedia page right now because I'm realizing that I actually thought she was somebody else up to this point. Um, oh, she was in Fantastic Four. Well, that good for her. Um, I've got nothing. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Good. Good luck with that. <laughs> All right, Mike. Well, it's been good having you on the show. Come back again soon. Hope you enjoy WrestleMania. And uh, anything else to say? Uh, just keep it real, everybody. All righty. Keep it That's real. And, and here we go. We're going to go back with some more music, and then we'll be back with more Bowling Shoe Handsome. <laughs> I got up early to clean my insides off the floor And I saw your face on the billboard ads above 84 And since I'm broken and I am lost I'm now myself into a cross Would you help me down? Captain We're Sinking with the song Foster Brothers from their release on Evil Weevil Records. Evil Weevil Records 
is the primary label behind the Road to, I'd say primary, they are the label behind the upcoming Road to Ruin Fest, which is going to be taking place in Philadelphia next month. That's uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, not Philadelphia, Mississippi, in case I wasn't clear enough about that before. That's going to be taking place between April 20th and 22nd at sites to be determined in the city of Brotherly Love. It's going to be a three day festival of punk rock and wrestling. The wrestling is going to be furnished by independent favorites Chikara so I'm very much excited about that and we're going to be uh, looking to get some more information regarding the wrestling portion of the show for you in the coming weeks but in addition to the wrestling we have uh, an event that's going to be the record release show for several bands including none other than the Menzingers and Night Sins so this is going to be a huge thing uh, and it's a huge undertaking really I've never heard of uh, a mixture of punk and wrestling so extensive and the the two forms of entertainment do have a history dating back really to the beginning of the punk genre but this is just something on a scale that's that's never to the best of my knowledge even been attempted before and we have a lot of great bands that are playing the event again it is a three-day festival and uh, apart from the aforementioned mentioned menzingers for a menzing i meant i tried to make a pun there it didn't work the menzingers we have Night Sins, we already mentioned, uh, Algernon Cadwallader, uh, let's see, Luther, of course, a terrific local band, Captain We're Sinking, who we just heard music from uh, nary seconds ago, Philadelphia's own The Holy Mess, Piss Jeans, Cloak Dagger, Tiger's Jaw, the Nightbirds, who have taken the punk rock world by storm in the past months, uh, the past several months. They're just getting uh, bigger and bigger by the day, and they will be playing Road to Ruin Fest. And again, this is going to be an amazing time. If you are able to get out for the show, you will not regret it. And we're going to actually play a couple more songs. Uh, we'll be talking more about Road to Ruin Fest over the next couple of weeks, but suffice to say, this is going to be a once-in-a-lifetime event. So make sure that you get to it if you are at all able to. We're going to play a couple more songs from bands that are going to be at the festival and uh, both of whom have, have releases on Evil Weevil Records. And first we have the band Big Eyes, and the song is called Since You Left on Bowling Shoe Handsome. <laughs> Yeah. 
And that was The Eeries with the song Walk You Home from their 7-inch Comes Alive on Evil Weevil Records. Again, The Eeries are uh, among dozens of other bands that are going to be, the dozens of bands, I should say, that are going to be performing at Road to Ruin Fest the weekend of April 20th to 22nd in Philadelphia, PA. Again, it's a weekend full of punk rock and wrestling. Could not be more excited that this is happening in my own hometown. And again, that's what we aim to do here is to bring different forms of culture and uh, entertainment together because I think there's a lot more linking pro wrestling and punk rock together than many of us may realize and could not be more evident with, of course, WWE champion CM Punk going into WrestleMania defending his championship against Chris Jericho. Do you like how I tied that together there? Was that not expert, expert tying together <laughs> of things? Okay, it's, it's been a long week for me, folks. Uh, I've got another one that's just beginning here. And, again, lots of exciting things coming up in the world of pro wrestling, both on an independent and smaller scale and in the broader scheme of things. So we hope that you'll stick with us. Again, WrestleMania is coming up on Sunday. And we, of course, are going to be here with our recap of that on Monday. Again, the royal we. I need to get used to saying the word I. I am going to be here. Perhaps I'll have a guest. Should I have a guest? Yeah, I should probably have a guest. Uh, regardless, it's either going to be me or me and another person here recapping WrestleMania 28 next week. And I could not be more excited for this show because, again, uh, as Mike Bessler and I spoke spoke about a few minutes ago, there's a lot to be excited about uh, for lots of different reasons. And it should be a great show. I have no doubt. I think when you go into an event like this, no one is quite sure what's going to happen. You have a lot of different matches and different types of matches. You have The Rock and John Cena. You have the first ever outdoor Hell in a Cell match with The Undertaker uh, and Triple H. The streak's on the line. Shawn Michaels is going to be the X Factor in that one. And then, of course, you have the championship matches. You have CM Punk defending against Chris Jericho in what will probably be one of the greatest WrestleMania matches uh, from a technical wrestling standpoint that we've seen in quite some time. I, I, would, uh, I would bet the farm on that, actually. And then, of course, we have Daniel Bryan defending his championship against his championship being the World Heavyweight Championship against Sheamus. And it's beyond that, we do have the undercard. We have the Team Johnny versus Team Teddy match. And the winning team, uh, the captain, become, the, not the captain, uh, John, Johnny or Teddy. See, this, this actually bothers me a little bit. You have Team Johnny and Team Teddy, but the captains are... David Otunga and Santino Morella, respectively. That that just sort of that sort of thing to me is conf is confusing enough. So to people who are not watching a lot of WWE, they tune and see that and okay, well, what sense does that make if the team is named this and then there's a captain and so anyway, hanging in the balance in that match is the general manager position for both Raw and SmackDown. I think uh, I don't want to get really into predictions right now because well, I'll tell you why in a minute, but. But I, I would look for Team Johnny to take that because I think, unfortunately, we've got a lot more of uh, Johnny Ace on WWE programming coming months. You know, that's really what's so exciting about WrestleMania is it's not just the end of one season of wrestling, so to speak, but it's the beginning of another. And in order for WrestleMania to be the best it can be, it needs to sow some seeds where it, uh, it wraps up some storylines and brings some new clothes. It needs to also leave open the possibility for programming in the coming months. So for that reason, I think it's going to be really interesting to watch. And the reason that I'm not going to go too much into predictions here is because I'm going to be appearing in the room tomorrow night with Brady and DJ. And we're going to be running down the WrestleMania 28 card. We're going to be giving you our predictions. And I'm really excited to be back in the room with Brady and DJ. Of course, that's where I started out. And from whence I came... I shall go back there <laughs> tomorrow night. <laughs> Again, uh, folks, it's going to be a great WrestleMania. I I'm pretty confident in that. I'm interested to hear what uh, Brady and DJ think on the WrestleMania 28 Go Home Show. But we're gonna, uh, regardless, we're going to be airing live at thebradyhicks.com tomorrow night. And make sure you tune in for that. And if you're not able to tune in live, we will have the show up at thebradyhicks.com or I should say Brady's going to have it up within a day or so from the recording. So that said, 
that about does it for the wrestling portion of our program and indeed for most of the program altogether. But we have one more song to play. And that is from friend of the show, Jack's Smirking Revenge. And the song is called Strangely Meta here on Bowling Shoe Handsome. We were growing up I don't think any single one of us Had lofty dreams Of one day Of one day being a wage slave Is this what we've been reduced to? Western progress of humanity Useless generations raised To answer phones, wait tables, and sling coffee Selling our time, our souls, our bodies Just to pay rent When our parents told us that one day We would grow up, they didn't mention That this is what they meant Riding down tens of pounds on my waist log When I can't afford to eat Busking for change on my days off Would any of yuppies mind buying me a drink? I shouldn't mind this degradation We all go through it at some point in our life But I can't seem to get my mind on Better things I could be doing with my time But it doesn't have to be this way We can reclaim our humanity, we can end this monotony We can scream into their faces, I'm a goddamn human being my life is worth more than this paycheck to paycheck living And that was Strangely Meta by Jack Smirking Revenge. Well, it's been uh, an interesting week here at Bowling Shoe Handsome. Again, I'm still adjusting somewhat to this new format where I'm t <laughs> I felt like I didn't shut up before and that I had <laughs> that I had too much to say before, but now with uh with John not here, it is taking a little bit of adjusting to again carrying the bulk of the show by myself. Uh grateful to Mike Bessler for coming here and putting another human voice on the line in between these these songs that you're really tuning into the show to check out because honestly i'm very proud that we're able to showcase a lot of the bands and solo artists that we are here on bowling shoe handsome it's honestly my favorite part of the show wrestling and music my two loves and this show is my way to sort of marry those loves together so uh you heard it here for, first folks the <laughs> the home of wrestling, punk rock, and polygamy here on the internet, Bowling Shoe Handsome, playing great DIY underground punk rock, and blathering on about wrestling occasionally in between those songs that we're playing. So thanks for supporting the show. Thanks for tuning in. We will be back here uh, next week running down the results for WrestleMania 28. We have some amazing music coming up next week. I... The playlist is set for that and it's it's going to be a good one so make sure that you tune in next week for the music and yeah for the wrestling talk too because it's going to be an exciting week and of course tune in tomorrow night to thebradyhicks.com where I will be going back in the room once again with the Brady Hicks 
and D- his good buddy DJ and my good buddy DJ <laughs> and Don West's good buddy DJ. So, with that said, enjoy WrestleMania. And you'll be hearing from me next week. And feel free to leave your comments over at thebradyhicks.com or to me in an email at bowlingshoehandsome at gmail.com. I'm Kevin McElvaney for Bowling Shoe Handsome. See you next week. So don't ask me how I am. Don't ask me how.